How do you choose the right pin on a Node MCU? Today on The Hookup, we're going to explore some of the quirks of the different pins on both the ESP8266 and the ESP32 based Node MCUs to figure out which ones are best and which to avoid. Straight to the point, if you're using an ESP8266 based Node MCU, these are the best pins to use for your general purpose input output needs. If you're using the ESP32 based Node MCU, these pins are the best. Diagrams of each of these boards with the important details about each pin can be found in the video description. To see how I determined which pins are best, keep on watching. First of all, I have to admit, I'm mostly making this video for myself. I can't tell you how many times during a project I've troubleshooted my code, searching for my mistake, only to find out that the issue was due to some undocumented or poorly documented quirk of the Node MCU. In this video, we're going to talk about the different quirks of each of the pins on the ESP8266 and ESP32 based Node MCU and help you pick the best pins for your specific application. While we're talking about pins, it's important to know that the raw pin order on the Node MCU doesn't match up with the descriptions written on the board. For example, D1 on the ESP8266 based Node MCU is actually GPIO5. So if you were to type in pin mode one output, you wouldn't be assigning pin D1. In order to do that, you'd have to type in pin mode 5 output or pin mode D1 output assuming that you have the definitions file for your Node MCU pins installed in your Arduino IDE. On my diagrams, the raw pin orders are listed so you can use the numbers or the labels on the board. The most common source of irritation in my projects is that the Node MCU can be prevented from booting if certain pins are grounded, which we call pulling them low, or exposed to voltage, which we call pulling them high during the boot process. To explore which pins have this characteristic, I loaded up a simple sketch with a serial monitor, Wi-Fi, MQTT, and a single output pin. Then I hooked up a female to female jumper wire and I tested each channel while watching the serial monitor for boot progress. And then I repeated the same process connecting each pin to the 3.3 volt pin instead of ground. Using this method, I was able to determine the specific boot requirements for each pin. The second problem that I used to constantly troubleshoot has to do with pins that go high, which means they output around 3.3 volts during the boot process. When using these pins as outputs connected to either relays, transistors, or optoisolators, this causes them to fire for a short period of time during boot. This was especially jarring when the relay that I had connected to our alarm siren would chirp for about half a second any time my Node MCU rebooted due to an MQTT reconnection. To test this, I hooked up a 3.3 volt relay and I wrote a sketch that reboots after setting itself up correctly. I then tested each pin and noted which ones triggered the relay. A few of the pins on the ESP32 output only about one volt for a short period of time during the boot process. This wasn't enough voltage to trigger my relay, so I didn't include it on the chart. But if you were using a transistor with a really low threshold voltage, it could still cause issues. So just be aware of that. I'm going to keep this video short and focused solely on choosing the right GPIO pins, or more specifically, avoiding picking the wrong ones. I hope the diagrams that I've provided will be useful when you're making your next project using a Node MCU. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching the hookup.